Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the Black Expat coming at you from Taiwan of the Black Expat Podcast. If you guys checked out my last episode, you found out how I ended up accidentally placed into a Mandarin Chinese speaking class my very first year of college and how, uh, despite being very, very angry and talking to a million people about why I felt like I shouldn't have been in that class as a black man from Chicago, 18 years old, never even knew anything about the language at all, but ended up enjoying it and loving it and how that somehow led me to being in Taiwan, living and working for about 10 or 11 years. But enough about that because you guys have already seen that show. Hope you guys have a good day. Hope you guys have a good time. If you have a drink or drinks next to you, go ahead and pour yourself up one. I'm going to jump into my very next story, which is how did I end up coming to Taiwan in the first place? Again, I'm trying to do these under three minutes so that you don't have to spend more than three minutes listening to me talk. But sometimes these videos are going to be more than that because I say so and ain't nothing you can do about it. But sit back, relax, and enjoy. So, cheers to that. All right, let's get right into it. So, as you guys know, in college, I studied Mandarin Chinese, right? Crazy to think about it. Again, accidentally placed into it and ended up falling in love with the language, the culture, this, that, and third. But I was still living in Greencastle, Indiana and going to college there, even off from Chicago, because, you know, you live pretty much where you go to college because you're there for pretty much two months out of the year. But anyway, uh, so I like the language. And my advisor was like, hey, you black. I'm like, cool, I know. Thanks for letting me know. I didn't know that. Duh. He's like, you should think about becoming fluent in Chinese. You've been taking it for four years. I'm like, yeah, I have been taking it for four years. I've been getting A's and it's been really, really, really good to my GPA. Shout out to y'all. But anyway, he's like, man, nah, let's, let's be serious. Have you thought about studying abroad? I'm like, yeah, man, I thought about going to California or Florida or something like that. He's like, nah, man, out of the country. I'm like, well, shit. Anywhere out of Chicago, pretty much out of the country for me. But yeah, you know what? Let's go ahead and let's do it. Now, I wanna I wanna backtrack a little bit. I had been to Egypt at this point. I was just joking. I know what out of the country is, y'all. I'm not stupid. And back into the story. He's like, yeah, man, we're gonna bring to get you to mainland China. I'm like, who am I just gonna cost? He's like, I don't know yet. Let's check and see. I'm like, hmm, well if it ain't free, it ain't for me. Fast forward, turns out that because I was on the scholarship, if you listen to the previous episode, you know what that scholarship is, shout out to the Posse Foundation. Y'all some real ones. Uh, because of scholarship, I could go and study abroad in mainland China at Tsinghua University in Beijing for free. And the extra money that I would pay because the price difference is there. American schools are dumb expensive. Schools pretty much all everywhere else in the world are not. Y'all see that problem. I ain't even got to talk about it. I ended up getting more money because for myself to put in my actual pocket. One, because I was studying abroad. And two, because I wasn't going to school in expensive ass America to go and study abroad in Beijing, China. So again, Actually, I was really against it, right? At first, when I was thinking about it, I was like, you know what? Nah, I'm good. I'm not trying to leave. It was my senior year, first semester. You guys have all went to college. Maybe if you didn't go to college, imagine your last year of high school. If you didn't go to high school, imagine, I don't know, your last year of preschool or something. You guys all turning up because your last year, you know, man, I'm going to be in first grade. I mean, I'm going to be done with high school because that's a thing. I mean, I'm going to be done with college, right? Your last year, if anything, you are all the way turned up. I'm like, hmm, three and a half years of hard work, and I'm about to put it on pause to go to a different country around the world. And I'm not gonna lie, my advisor, the guy that was working with me, he made sure he said, hey, you're not gonna waste this four years. You're gonna go, you're gonna leave the country on a great ass time. I'm gonna make sure you go. I'm not, not lying to y'all. He called me every single day to make sure I was going. Check my mom, she's like, yeah, it's cool, whatever. Go ahead, you can do it, I don't care. I was like, dang, y'all just want me to be out of the country for that long? That's cool, whatever, y'all, bye. It was six and a half months of living in Beijing. Talked to my sister, she was like, yeah, cool, uh-huh, go put some gas in my car, she didn't really care. My sister, she didn't understand what I was saying. She was, you know, she was pretty young. She was like, yeah, cool, whatever. Chinese, Chinese, Chinese. I was like, hmm, that's not okay. We'll talk about that later. But yeah, so I ended up going to uh, study abroad in Beijing. We're going to skip that. A whole lot of stories about that. Fast forward. On my way back, again, it's senior year, my senior year of college. I'm like, huh, I got to get a job. Because you're from college, you got to get a job. Or you ain't going to eat. Or your mama going to kick you out. Or all those amazing things that we already know, right? So I'm like, huh, where can I get a job at? Drink break. What are my skills? I'm mildly fluent in Chinese at this point because I've been living in Beijing for six months. Hmm, uh, my major are sociology, anthropology, and Mandarin Chinese. Hmm, what can I do? Oh yeah, that's right. It was that whole stock market crashing thing, whole depression thing that America was going through and then Obama was transitioning into office and George Bush had just left. So guess what, y'all? It wasn't no jobs nowhere. So I come back and of course, 
my wonderful Taiwanese professor was like, hey, do you want a job? And I'm like, yeah, I'm broke, girl. She's like, don't call me, girl. I'm like, my bad, professor. She's like, hey, you wanna go live and work in Taiwan? I'm like, what's that? She's like, you mean, where's that? And I'm like, nah, I mean, what's that? No, where's that? It's a place. I'm like, where? She's like, yeah. I'm like, cool. Then she shows me this five minute video of this amazing place with palm trees, the weather's nice, it's kids running around, hair flapping in the wind, even though it's real humid or whatever. And I'm like, man, that looks kind of dope. What I gotta do there? She's like, hey, you're gonna teach kids. I'm like, what I'm gonna teach them? She's like, you're gonna teach them English. I'm like, cool, I speak that. She's like, yeah, I know. I'm like, oh, okay. Do I need to be training and things? Like, nah, man, let's get on that plane and go. What I gotta pay for your plane ticket? Mother. I'm like, okay, my bad, dang. Just, just dang, dang. Anyway, so I get the job offer right off the plane, back from living abroad in Beijing. And at this point, I'm like, ah, oh, let me wait two months. Let me wait three months. Still, no job. So guess what? I'm like, hey, mom. I'm leaving the country again. She's like, nah, I ain't going for too long. Stop playing. Where you going this time? Where you going this time? I'm like, nah, this time I'm for real. I'm going to work in Taiwan. I'm going to go to Taiwan for a year, maybe two. I'm going to become fluent in Chinese. I'm going to come back. I'm going to work for the U.S. government. Not going to tell you which branch because I might still work for them. I ain't trying to mess up the bag in the future. She's like, oh, okay, cool. Talk to Melissa. She's like, yeah, go put some gas in the car. Talk to Melissa. She's like, oh my God, no. No, I'm going to high school. I'm going to miss you. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to miss you too. I love you. I'm sorry. But I got to bounce. And that is the probably five minutes of London. But that is the long story of how I ended up working and living in Taiwan the first year, right? Got off the plane, got a job offer, didn't turn it down. Said, you know what? Why not? Let's do it. Uh, yo, yo, turn up. Did it. Loved it. Stayed. 10 to 11 years. Again, Thanks for tuning into the story. I hope you guys enjoyed it. There are a bunch of things that I'm missing. If you want to hear the full story, then all you do is go to the Black Expat Podcast. Where can you find it? Everywhere podcasts can be found. My favorite place to find it? Spotify, Apple Music, iHeartRadio, SoundCloud, and that other one that I always forget about. But anyways, thank you guys for tuning in to another episode of me talking about myself and being a Black Expat and having a podcast. Take a drink with me. We out, you.